So, hi, uh, Ahoy, Sosede, hallo Nachbarn, uh, welcome to my little practice. I want to show you some things about Funinho. Uh, we're going to talk about it later in the theoretical part as well. Uh, basically, Funinho is a concept by a hockey coach, Horst uh, Hein, and it's always uh, on several goals, on multiple goals, on multiple targets. So, one team has two targets to score at for example, okay? Um, and I'm going to show you some games to introduce these uh, kind of games with Fernando uh, in basketball. And the first thing we're going to do is play free, okay? And the kids, uh, there are two teams and they can score by putting the frisbee down in the zone, okay? And one team has two zones to score at. So you're going to grasp the concept uh, quickly. Okay? Gut. Äh, für die Regeln noch wichtig, wenn die Frisbee auf den Boden fällt, einfach dort die Mannschaft Ball. Ja? Man darf nicht mit der Frisbee laufen das, das und äh, Sternschritt machen. Das habe ich gesagt. Hast du alles schon gesagt? Na, also Perfekt. Mit dem, mit dem Runterfall nicht, dass die damit nicht laufen dürfen. Genau. Nicht so Frisbee spannen, was noch hält? Ja, I just told them when they drop the Frisbee. The other team has the frisbee at this point. You can just do pivots. You cannot move with the frisbee. Okay? Okay. Then, let's start. Okay. 1-0. Yeah, what you can see right now, there's a lot of space. I mean, for eight kids, maybe even too much space here. Okay, maybe it's even uh, too wide, the area. But uh, the idea of Horst Wein was to get more touches to the kids, you know, that every, every kid is involved, that no kid is uh, left behind and just, you know, doing nothing. All have to, uh, they all have more touches, they are more involved, they have to run more, and basically, What the topic is today with Fernando to um, enhance I, bas basketball IQ and creativity and uh, playing ability yeah, is to just play and to find some solutions and they will find some solutions. Sometimes it takes maybe 30 minutes or maybe even two practices, but you will see some progress in you know getting open and find one of the kids. Uh, To, to fake to the other target and go back, or they're going to use the space. And then when you go back to normal basketball, you will see uh, these progress in basketball IQ as well. This is my opinion. Okay, what's the score? What's the score, guys? Huh? Okay. See, eins? Okay. Four. Okay, we play to five. Okay, nice. Blue, blue one. Okay, first game. You need to drink something. You need to drink something. No, then just stay here. Just stay here. Yeah, stay here. Stay here. Stay here. Okay, now we play another game. It's called chuck ball or board ball. You know the board, yeah, on the basketball hoop, the board. Um, this is out of bounds. Okay. The rest, there's there's no out of bounds. Okay, so you can unless it falls behind the uh, the wooden fence. Okay. Okay, follow me. Follow me. In this game, you can score when you put the ball against the board and either you catch it or your teammate catches it before it falls on the ground. Okay? Yeah? And again, you don't have just one board to score it, you have 
two boards, each team. So the blue team, they're going to use this board and this board there. Okay. And the other team, which boards can you use? Yeah, show me. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Okay. Uh, again, uh, no dribble, yeah? Just pivots, okay? Passing, give and goes. We start with one ball. Haben Sie alles anderen? Geht? Also erstmal ein Ball, dann zwei. Genau, erstmal ein. Ja? Okay. So. Yeah, it's a score, it's a score. Just run the ball. Yeah, that's good. Ja, hm? das geht auch. Alles gut. So. Ne, Sie können auch mehrfach äh, auf das gleiche Brett scoren, aber natürlich äh, Ball wechseln, ne? Nach dem Ball. Also einfach lassen. This is a variation of uh, the game Chuckball. Normally Chuckball is played on trampolines. Maybe I can show you a video later. It's a pretty nice game. Thousands of variations. And we play it like board ball, you know, you have to throw the ball against the board. Right now they have to catch it, or a teammate has to catch it before dropping uh, on the ground. And again, multiple targets. And now uh, I arrange the targets uh, differently. So now it's cross target, you know, diagonally. One target there and one target there. So they have to, they have to think. And at some point, uh, this is not a mini basketball team, this is U14, okay? Normally I want to show you uh, these kind of games with U8, U10, maybe U11. And they're gonna get mentally overloaded at some point. They are confused by the goals. Um, but, like I said before, at some point uh, they're gonna find solutions. And when you go back, when you take away, uh, take away the mental overload, they're gonna be better at normal basketball, at the reads. It's gonna be simpler for them. It's like Steph Curry trading ball handling with a tennis ball with two balls. And then he goes back after overloading to just dribbling the basketball. It's easier. My opinion. Okay, we're gonna drop a second ball in there. Here, Anna, zweiter Ball. Second, oh, second ball, second ball. Same game, same game, second. <laughs> what is your board? What is your board? This? Yeah, you can, sc you can score, you can score. Don't wait. Yeah, nice job. Now you have to now you have to drop it. Change of ball. You score, then the opponent has ball, okay? Like normal basketball. Hey! Hey, Hoshiro! Wie steht's, Anna? Genau, wenn sie gescored haben, müsst ihr den Ball liegen lassen, ja, das ist wichtig. Okay. Oh, nice catch, nice catch. Good job. You have to drop it. Other team's ball. Hey, blue team, blue team, you got another ball there. Mit zwei Männern ist es mit acht Leuten fast zu anstrengend jetzt gerade, ne? Ja. Nehme. Mach bis vier, mach bis vier und dann mache ich noch eine Variante. Das ist aber auch cool. <laughs> What Anna just observed. Um, okay, I'm just going to introduce the next game, then I'm going to talk to you guys. Here yeah, come zusammen. Point, point, point. <laughs> Let's go. Um, one more game, and then you can have a drink. Okay? We take one ball away. The same game, yeah, but now you score by throwing against the board and the ball has to, dr has to drop on the ball for the offense, then they score. The defense can try to catch the ball in the ground and getting a point as well. Ta obrana, ten místní, že když třetí nejspadne, tak má obrana. 
And we switch the boards. Now Team Blue has to score on the on the other boards, you know, vice versa. Okay. Stick with just one ball. Just another variation of the game. Now they have to toss it against the board and when it hits the ground it's a point and if the defense catches it before hitting the ground they can prevent it and getting a point themselves. Uh, what Anna observed uh, in the game before because it's uh, just eight games, it kind of separated in two games, two on two. But I don't think it's necessarily a bad game because in this four kid constellation they have a lot of touches as well and the kids are involved, you know. You don't have a kid right now. Um, that is just standing there and, you know, not having fun. And I see you, even if you do it with 14 kids, seven on seven, if you have the four targets, it's going to space out. And if you use more balls or more frisbees, more whatever, then the kids are going to be more involved, you know, especially the shy kids. There's always the ball dominant kids and we want to help every kid to be involved, to have fun. Was hast du gerade gesagt? Was war? Was? Zwei Jahre, da war äh, hat's Bett nicht getroffen, aber da habe ich gesagt, das andere ist in Handball. Achso, gut, ich hätte jetzt Bande gemacht, aber klar, kannst du auch machen, alles gut. Zwei, zwei? Zwei, zwei? Ich hatte alles super gefangen, ohne dass... Ja, 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 richtig, wenn er nicht auf dem, also wenn er es schafft, bevor er auf dem Boden aufkommt. Das ist eine Obrana Plasse, das ist eine Obrana Plasse. You see the board, it's small. <lacht> Wie stand es jetzt, Anna? Okay, mach bis vier, ja, und dann äh, Trinkpause. Okay? Danke. Auf dem Boden. Ja, auf dem Boden, aber vom Verteidiger dann. Weißt du? Ich dachte, der Verteidiger, Verteidiger muss fangen, ohne dass er auf dem Boden fällt und der Pfeifer äh, muss auf den Boden fallen. Genau. Genau, und das war jetzt, das war jetzt der andere. Achso, wie, wie steht's denn sonst? Sonst lass es abbrechen. Ja, habe ich. Ja. Achso, okay. Trinkpause. Gut. <lacht> ähm, kannst du die, einmal die, genau, die vier grünen äh, an den Korb stellen und die vier roten an den anderen? Geht das mit deiner Hand? Ja. ja. Danke. Ja, einfach so, äh, genau, äh, so aufgedreht unter dem Korb. <lacht> du kannst es nicht falsch machen.
Jetzt brauchen wir vier Teams, A2 Kinder. Ja, ich habe was. Müssen wir mal gucken. Vielleicht kannst du sie fragen, was so ungefähr Sinn macht vom Level. So, we need teams with... Das ist jetzt wichtig, Schnelligkeit. Uh, you, maybe you can uh, build the teams yourself, but fair teams, you know? Yeah. Equally strong teams yeah. can do that? Pare, yeah? oh? Yeah? Okay. Is, is this fair? Well, okay, cool. Then you guys are going to be orange. Yeah, the orange team. Uh, you can stay without jersey, colored one. Uh, the, the blue one, yeah, and the green. Okay. Guys. The next game is called Mensch ärger dich nicht, Ludo. <laughs> <laughs> Every team has a basket, yeah. For example, your basket is this basket, this is your home basket, yeah. You have to protect it, you have to defend it. Yeah. These are your cones. Green this one, blue this one, and uh, you got the yellow one, okay? Yeah, easy. You can attack every basket except your own, of course. You don't want to score on your own basket, right? So you can score there, you can score there, you can score there, if you are team orange, yeah? Okay? When you score, when you score on a basket, you can take away a cone and run your basket and put it there. And you have one more, okay? Da nehmen Sie den weg und bringen ihn zu Ihrem Korb. Ja, dem Heimatkorb. Also okay, wenn ich was wir da getroffen haben, nehme ich mir einen gelben und bringe ich es nach Hause. Zu dir, genau. Okay. Um, okay. When you have no bones, yeah, you can win anymore, but you can still play. Still score and put the cones to the team you like the most after yourself. Okay? And let's see how long it takes. Either I stop or at some point one team has all the cones. We will see. Okay? Ready? Genau. Oder wir stoppen vorher. Also there's no out of bounds. There's no out of bounds. You can you can chase the ball. Yeah. And ich werde irgendwann einen zweiten dazu machen. Ja? Aber erstmal nur einen Ball. Okay, go to your basket. You start there. Go to the blue basket, please. Thank you. Ja. Aber verrat nicht zu viel, ja? Also, okay. Okay. Ready? Let's go. Okay, so the next game uh, in German it's called Mensch ärger dich nicht. Uh, in English Ludo, I think. Um, so you see four teams, yeah, with a home basket and they can score on all the three other baskets to get cones. If they score, they can get a cone, bring it to their basket. Okay, and at some point one team is going to be eliminated with no cones, but they can still play, they can uh, still score and get the cones to the other team they like most after themselves. Okay, so we don't have this, uh, this thing that at some point two kids are not going to play anymore, but you still see they are, they are kind of passive, you know, they are just standing there. And I'm gonna put a second ball into the game. Yeah? In a minute. And yeah? 
zwei, zwei. Also können Sie dann quasi auch andere Plätze sein, wenn Sie wählen. Ich hole hol gleich den zweiten Ball. Wo ist denn der? Ach da, guck mal, da liegen wir schon. Ne, aber dürfen Sie dann an, auch andere jetzt aktiv sein? Die dürf, ja, die dürfen, die dürfen alles, die dürfen auch beim Offensivrebound stehen, die dürfen alles machen. Yeah, you see, this is the first time they, they play uh, this kind of game, and they are very passive, you know. But I don't want to reveal too much to them. Uh, for example, that they could go to the offensive board. At some point, they're going to find the solution. Um, and the setup is not, not optimal because uh, the two baskets are very far away. So probably they're going to play against this team a lot more than against this team. But still, we're going to see what's happened when I put this ball into the game. Here, guys. Ahoy! Here. Second ball. Ja, ja, also das könnte man einfordern, ähm, dass sie die Fouls selbst dann sagen. Wenn du jetzt was Weil zu krasses siehst, kannst du natürlich was sagen. Weil du hast dann halt viele äh, Fanpunkte und wenn sie dann anfangen zu ziehen, genau. ah, das war faul, Schnitzel. Uh. Ja, das war Anna's Point, uh, how to call the fouls. Um, you can do it as a coach or you can try to get them to call defensive fouls on their own, which doesn't well in mini basketball so you have to be very attentive yeah, and regulate the, the game at some point um, yeah Yeah, but still, I like this game uh, because you can enforce some one-on-one, -on -one, even one-on-two situations, and you know to get to get the players to to be more aggressive, especially in mini basketball with a lot of younger, shy kids. It takes a while to to get them to grasp the concept to always be ready to attack, you know, to attack the basket. And there they have three opportunities to attack, and they can. If they see a matchup they don't like, they can turn around, you know, to another basket, and yeah, there's a lot of chaos. So um, it can happen that a that a, a player that is not as good as a player um, scores a basket anyways. And things I always like in mini basketball, you know, if you if you level the competition. If it, they, you know, it's their tactical decisions uh, to be smart, either to, to, to be on the offensive board or to help as a defender on another basket to get the ball or to just... At some point they, they're going to see that just standing there on your basket is not going to win you the game and they're going to be more active, I guarantee. And you can easily play it uh, if you have 16 or maybe even, even 20 kids in one practice, you know. That's, Sometimes it is that way. Then you can play with uh, teams of four or five, and everyone is involved. Um, sometimes I just have one uh, quarter of the gym, so just two baskets, and then I have two mobile baskets, and I put them there, and then I can always play Funinu uh, games with four targets. I mean, maybe it's luxury, but these are really cheap uh, mobile baskets, you know, from, uh, from Tarmac. And not very expensive, and I think they are they are easy to to put everywhere. So it's it's a huge advantage, I think, for mini basketball to get as many baskets at, as possible. Not only for shooting, but for these kind of games as well. Yeah. Zieh mal runter. Okay. Pojďte dohromady. 
Yeah. Come together. Huddle. So, obviously, you guys won. Okay, congrats. Well, question: Did you like the game? What? What? what, what okay, you liked it because you won. What didn't? What didn't you like? Can't say fun. Okay. Uh, break. Yeah. Have a drink. It's warm. Okay. And then we continue. Wie spät ist es? Ich habe mein Handy hingelegt. Alles gut. Jetzt gehen wir tatsächlich in klassische Folie. Ja. Klassisches Basketball von Nino, also jetzt wirklich Basketball auf die vier Körbe. Ah. Äh, genau. Ähm, aber die erste Runde noch ähm, ohne Dribbling auch. Okay. Und danach mache ich eine Variante im. im nee, nee, jetzt sind es wieder Mannschaften aus vier, zwei Mannschaften. Okay, ja. Die anderen Mannschaften, die vorne die Mannschaften waren fair, oder? Ja, uh, Guys, now we go back to the, to the teams before this game, so just uh, four on four. Okay? Bis bis 30 habe ich eigentlich Zeit, ne? Aber ja, mal gucken. Bis, doch, doch, nee, ich glaube bis 30. Bis eine Stunde habe ich. Äh, nee. Genau, der, der, der kann ja noch nicht. Gut. Wir, ble wir bleiben da. Die, ah genau, die Hütchen können sie abbauen. Oh, nice. <lacht> Was für liebe Kinder. Can you give me the ball? De Kuye. Das ist einfach ein Ich rolle sie dann gleich weg. Oh, farblich sortiert noch. <lacht> Okay, then come here, please, guys. Now we're going to play basketball, okay? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, on the four baskets, okay? Like the the second game, uh, trick ball. But now you can you you score just like a normal basketball by layups, by three point shots, you know, whatever. Um, first round. A blue can score on this basket and on this basket. Where can you score? Okay. And this round, no dribble. Yeah, again. Don't worry, we're gonna dribble later on. Uh, but no dribble at the moment. Um, yeah, we're gonna play until 11. Okay? With two points and three points. Yeah, on You cannot score three points, obviously, but. You don't need to inbound, okay? There. Out of bounds there is the sideline, but here uh, there, there's no bounds. And when you score, you can dribble inbound, yeah, or pass it right away. You don't have to uh, get behind the baseline, okay? You can play fast. Da ist er aus, ja, aber die müssen nicht, die können dann rein dribbeln, habe ich gesagt, dribbeln im Bauen. Auch Kopf erfolgt nicht, Baseline können gleich losdribbeln oder passen. 
Nicht, dass du das abpfeifst, ja? Weil ich hab, wenn ich das wüsste, hätte ich meine Pfeifen mitgenommen. Nee, nee, du brauchst ja gar nichts abpfeifen, darum geht's ja. Okay, na, aber wenn sie faulen, ein Stück Ja, machen. das kannst du pfeifen, genau. Ja, aber ich habe keine Pfeife, das muss ich dir sagen. Ja, ich ich helfe dir auch, ich guck gerade Ja, also... Okay. Are you ready? Ja? Yeah? Okay, let's go. So now we approach the, the classic for Nino, yeah, we're uh, playing basketball on four baskets, um, but still they are not allowed to dribble at this point, uh, we're going to get to this point later on. Um, to make the game faster, there's no out of bounds uh, except for this sideline and they can dribble and bound after, after a basket is scored, you know, to, to make the ball, to make the and yeah, maybe you just make some observations about the game and later on we can, we can talk about what, you, what you've seen, yeah? Boy, 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 tempo! <laughs> Have you seen this is uh, this, these kind of reads? I mean, they, they are U14, so it's going to come easier to them. But when you do it with an the U8 or U10 and you see this, uh, these kind of reads, you are really happy as a coach, I think, because you know, at some point they're going to be smarter and, and more clever. Sonntagmorgen einfach mal draußen ja, sich ein paar Kinder angucken. Ja, die Fußballatmosphäre ist genial, oder? Ja, es war dann ein der Spot zum Sitzen. Wenn man da gesessen hätte, hätte man beides gesehen. Du darfst nichts Beleidigendes sagen, das Mikro ist an. Andererseits ist er nur für interne Bezeichnung. Oh, left-handed layup. Bravo. Wie steht's, Anna? 6-2 für Blau. Ist Blau doch stark. Ja, nicht so stark. Die Hinten vor allem hier, der mit dem Kör, das ist der hat heute. Scheiße. Das können wir rausstellen. Nein, ist ja nicht für die offiziellen Aufzeichnungen. Alles gut. Das wird nicht an den BVS geschickt. Ja, der ist ein bisschen verloren, ein bisschen lost. Aber es waren schon ein paar lustige Reads. Habe ich schon gesehen. Also Blau hat schon zweimal smart ja, ja, den Ball weitergepasst.
Oh, nice cut. Uh, bravo. Uh, good idea. Good passing idea. Haben die 10 jetzt schon? Ja. Bis, bis 11. Okay. Ja, die ist einfach jetzt, also die beiden und die beiden jeweils, also jetzt nicht mehr diagonal. Ah, okay. Lass sie was trinken, kurz. <lacht> okay. Yeah, I think I have to give him like a shooting break or at some point. Um, I didn't plan it as a normal practice because I, I thought I only had 45 to 60 minutes. So I just wanted to introduce to you as many possible game variations as, uh, yeah. Um, I'm going to show you a really interesting uh, one um, that we're going to enforce some one on uh, one on four play and then two on four play on baskets. Okay, we'll see. I think it's pretty nice. And, yeah, and then we can talk later. Wie sind sie drauf? How you feeling? All right? Yeah. Yeah? Too hot? Yeah. Yeah? Too hot? Okay, we're going to do one more game and then we're going to do some, some, uh, some shooting game. Okay, so you can uh, relax a bit. Yeah? Yes. Okay? <laughs> the kids are spent. <laughs> Okay, meet me here at the circle. Meet me here, guys. And please give me the ball. Give me the ball. Um, okay, now we play a game. Uh, I call it Tomasz uh, Zatoranski. <laughs> Zatoranski, you know him? Yeah? Okay. Great player, yeah, great player. Um, everybody, every one of you guys uh, is going to be Thomas Zatoranski now in this game, okay, for some time. Yeah. Uh, we start with the, with you, with, with the North team, yeah. You go here inside uh, the circle, and you, yeah. You are defense, okay. So, four players, everybody of these four players going to try to score on you and he can use every basket so you have to find a tactical solution to prevent that okay and you guys uh, you have to be smart and try to score like Thomas Zatoranski yeah. you can use all the four baskets okay one one is going to start and then the next one the next one next one, and we count the points okay you make yeah you can dribble when you stop dribbling uh, yeah you have to shoot or th th lag you know also, it's like 1-1 or 1-1. 1 gegen 4. Okay. So, who's going to start? Who's the first, Thomas? Okay, you're going to be the first, Thomas Zatoranski. Get ready, he can score on every, on every basket here, on all these four baskets. Okay. Okay, 3, 2, 1, go. You can go. You can go. You can go. You can go. Okay, you can you can uh, go for the offensive board as well. Okay, here, ball to them. Next one, next one, next Thomas Satoranski, next Thomas Satoranski. Yeah. 
Oh, oh, travel. Okay. Ah, no, no worries. Here, pass to them. Next one. You can start when you want, okay? <laughs> oh, foul point, point, two points. Shooting foul, two points. Instantly. Okay. So you got to be smart. Yeah, you can fake. You can use all the baskets. Okay. Yeah. Good drive. Good drive. Was a shooting foul. Well done. Okay. Last one. You. Okay. Okay, now switch. Yeah. Blue is going to be offense. Other team defense. Again, you can use all four baskets. Yeah, and if you keep your dribble alive, you can go anywhere. Okay, start when you when you're ready. It's two zero. Na faul war an dem roten im Shooting faul das war's. Also zwei neue. Am Schluss ja sagen wir. So uh, I called this game Thomas Satoranski. Yeah, right now you can call it uh, with any with any player, but I think that they all knew Thomas Satoranski, and they all going to be Thomas. Satoransky one against four. Okay. After this, we're going to play Thomas Satoransky and Jan Vesely. So they're going to play two on four, and they can score on every single. If they keep the dribble, you know, uh, they were not really smart <laughs> right now, as you could see. But you know, sometimes it, uh, it takes a while. And yeah, I think it's a, a really interesting uh, variation, you know, of the Foninho principle. Oh, nice take. Um, yeah. 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 And the defense. Yeah. Defense. All. All. Uh, the. Uh, the entire other team is, is defense. They can uh, decide how they want to defend. You know. Normally there are a bit more players, so you could have uh, one free safety who is roaming around. You know. But uh, I don't like giving solutions. At some point they're gonna they're gonna find a, a way. You know. And and be smart about it. Seid ihr durch? Ja, auch mal. 2-2. Okay. Next round. Now we play Thomas Satoranski and who is a good buddy of him? Jan Vesely? Ja? Ja, Jan Vesely ist gut. Okay. Now we play Thomas Satoranski and Jan Vesely. So, what's going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah? Perfectly correct answer. <laughs> Two on four. No. Uh, no. Okay. 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 So um, I like to break uh, Foninho down this way. You know, before that they played the the normal Foninho. And now it's a two and four, so maybe two, three on six. You know, if you have more players, and then I go back to Foninho, and then uh, most of the time you see some improvement in the reads um, instantly. You know, because they tend to be more aggressive. They tend to to use the four, uh, the the multiple targets uh, more. Well. Yes. 
Ah, good take, good take, nonetheless. You see? And the player with the blue hat, he, he already has the idea of, of, of passing to him when, when cutting to the open basket, you know? An idea, an idea I didn't see in the game before. So we're going to see at the end if he uses it in the normal game. Das durch? Jetzt blau? Okay. Alle les bleu. Okay, good luck. Bravo. Good pass. Okay, nice follow up. Es ist zu gut. Es ist keine homogene Gruppe hier. <lacht> Schwer. Also vielleicht würden wir die zwei großen. Äh Ach, alles gut. Ich meine, für die Veranschaulichung ist alles äh, reicht komplett aus. Alles gut. Zwei großen, also den, den einen mit der, mit der Pille, die hätten wir anfangen, aber wahrscheinlich splitten so ja. beide so. Aber sie wirken nicht zu frustriert, denke ich. Es ist, eigentlich sehen sie noch recht fröhlich aus. Es ist halt nur warm. Die müssen sich nein, ich koste, die müssen sich das gar nicht was haben. Ich glaube, es ist vorbei. Ist es vorbei? Ein mehr? Nein, das war's. Okay. Uh, now, before the last game, relax, you, uh, we play a, a round of jackpot. Okay? You know, you know the game? No. Relax, it's like free throw shooting. Just set up here. You start with shooting. Yeah? What's your name? Kuba. 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 Yeah? Kuba, sorry. The rest in a circle. Yeah, around the zone. Here, yeah, come on, come on. Yeah. Just need one ball. Yeah. Uh, we need some rebounders as well. We need some rebounders as well. Okay. Everybody has uh, five chips or lives. Yeah. You shoot. When you make the free throw, there's one chip in the pot, like poker. Yeah? Then you can decide if I want to shoot again, if you hit, two. When you hit again, three in the pot. When you don't want to shoot anymore, you go there, the next one is up. When there's something in the pot, like three, and he's missing, you're going to lose this amount of chips. For example, three in the pot, you shoot, you miss, you have two left. Yeah? Five chips in the pot. Jeder hat fünf. Fünf hat er in der Tasche, jeder. Genau. Und äh, dann noch wichtige Sache, wenn man null hat, ist man nicht raus, dann ist man Geist. Ghost Mode. Ja, yeah? when, you, when you have zero chips, you are dead, but you can still uh, play, then you are a ghost, in Ghost Mode. So you, don't, you, you cannot win anymore, cannot win the game anymore, but you can still make shots to put chips in the pot. Okay? Passiert Dann passiert, wir machen die einfache Variante. Okay, es gibt keinen Default Chip. Okay? Sonst verbrennen die hier in der Sonne. <lacht> die können schon nicht mehr. Ich meine, zu 8 Foninho ist halt auch wirklich mega tough. So. Was heißt denn was heißt denn zu 8 Foninho? Was ist das denn? Das kommt dann im Theorie-Teil, da, da erkläre ich dir das, das Partmanteau, erkläre ich dir noch. Ja, ich habe nur irgendwas mit dem Eishockey gehandelt bekommen. Ja, sage ich nachher oben, alles gut, da ist entspannter. Bitte? Ähm, ja, man, also ich hätte die Ziele enger zusammenbringen müssen, klar. Aber war jetzt hier, <lacht> genau. Das ist ein guter Punkt auf jeden Fall. So, um, as you can see, I just let them play a little shooting game um, because they are, they are spent, they are totally exhausted. I mean, 
Uh, good point from my colleague Habo. Uh, the, the space, the field, it was too large for, for eight kids to play uh, these Foninho uh, variations, you know. Normally what I should have done as a coach, as a good coach, I should have uh, moved the targets uh, closer together, uh, you know. And then you can be creative. For example, you can take mats or boxes, turn around boxes, you know. You can, you can put any target any there and then you and you still have the the Foninho principle of, of multiple targets yeah just for your information <laughs> but we're going to talk about this uh, later uh, in the theoretical part Finde that's why then you lose two Nee, wenn er daneben wirft, ja, er hat sich entschieden, weiter zu werfen. Ja. Jetzt der nächste dran. Hast du daneben geworfen? Ne, der nächste ist dran. Kannst auch jetzt einführen, dass man jetzt immer einverliert ab jetzt, wenn man daneben wirft. Nach, nach dem ich habe hab jetzt schon gesagt, dass. Uh dass wir das erstmal auch einfach spielen, dass äh, wenn du den Essen nicht kriegst, dann passiert nichts. Jetzt ist es doch schon 11.23 Uhr, ne? Okay. 24. Und was, was passiert dann? Dann gehen wir. Dann gehen wir hoch. Hoch? Dann hast du noch was theoretisch oder was? Genau. Ich dachte, das hast du, das hast du auch nach Mittag. Nee. Ich, ich, ich bleibe wahrscheinlich. Der Stefan hat Ladi als Übersetzer, oder? Ja, aber Wenn du dich nicht nedaš, tak bude čítáš dva, jo? Ten, co si nedal, když ten svoj pán... Dann... Lass uns doch... Ja, oder wir machen noch fünf Minuten die letzte Variante. Also, wir noch mal? Nee, ne? Das ist gut. Schaffen die das noch? Fünf Minuten? Zeigen wir die allerletzte. Schaffen die das? Ja. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, guys, I uh, misread the clock, so we just have five minutes left, and I want you to play the last round of Foninho, just five minutes. Now you can dribble, okay? Now you can dribble. Yeah. A hrajeme to, co jsme hráli předtím, jenom s přihrávkama. Hrajete teď s driblinkem, jo? Takže hrajete čtyři na čtyři, to se na ty dva koše, jo? Blyby musí být výpohyn. We changed the targets again, so blue. Blue, this one and this one. A druhá spohyn, co? Umzlokem. Pardon? Druhá se spohyn, kvazi a... Ne, jetzt je to so, diagonal. Ok, a so tak modrý, modrý, modrý... Where you playing at? Na ty dva koše. Which basket? A barevný. Perfect. Good. Yeah. Good job. Okay. Let's go. Stefan wird bestimmt in die Halle gehen. Er braucht auch Anna nicht zum. Er hat einen deutsch-tschechischen Trainer. Bei uns. Du brauchst Anna nicht zum. Äh Ausgreifen, weil <lacht> Stefan nicht übersetzen. Wir haben zwei Spieltrainer, die immer gerne spielen. Ah, okay. Also ich freue mich bei den Roller Testen. No inbound, you can you can play right away. Dribble inbound. Yeah, you can just start. <laughs> yeah, the last couple of minutes I wanted them to play the Foninho with dribble, you know. Um, as the last vari variation I wanted to show you. Now it's uh, I mean especially four and four with this much space. It's fairly easy to, to get open, uh, to dribble burst, to open layup. But yeah, maybe we see some interesting reads nonetheless. Hey. 
Ja? Achso, Anna, die können einfach beim, beim Einwurf. Anna. Die können einfach los nach dem Korberfolg. Müssen nicht einwerfen. Dribble inbound. Können gleich losmachen. Auch nicht in der Linie. Gleich ab. Ich habe denen jetzt gesagt, die sollen, äh, die sollen passen. Das wusste ich nicht. Alles gut. Oder bis die Zeit vorbei ist noch ähm, zwei Minuten noch. Was? Gerd meinte, wir haben noch länger? Oh, nice pass. Du, Gerd hat gesagt, noch länger? Oder was? Nee. Was hast du? Hast, hast, du, hast du gerade gesagt? Ja, Gerd, Gerd meinte, wir haben 15 Minuten noch frei. Ach so, ja dann, weil das Filme bist. Wie steht's jetzt? Äh, ich Okay, good kick. Okay, game. Yeah, come here. You made it. Thank you very much uh, for being here. You did a great job. I know it's hot and the field was too big for, for eight people, you know. Great job, really. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ah, zack. Machen wir noch einen Teamspruch? Hier. Hallo. Slunetta. Right? Ähm, uh, uh, was macht ihr? Was macht ihr immer? Okay. 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 Das war aber lang. Was heißt das? Also wenn du hoch gewinnst, dann sagst du, wir haben äh, hat man das Super. So. Hello coaches. Hello coaches. <lacht> Hello coaches. Okay. Yeah, um, this season I did this uh, mini trainer offensive, this MTO. Um, For example, my colleague Havo did, uh, did it as well two years ago, I think. And uh, the purpose of this Wintrin Offensive was a kind of a reformation of U6 uh, to U12 basketball uh, in Germany. Uh, we can dis discuss this later and compare it to the Czech Republic. I think it's really interesting. Um, yeah, and René, uh, my uh, colleague, he is the coach of U14. Uh, 
former JBBL coach, a regional coach in Saxony, and former pro <laughs> athlete. Really, yeah. Um, <laughs> and a few years ago. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we discuss a lot of things uh, in our office, and most of the time it's uh, this, this balance between, you know, fun. For example, the NTO focuses on, on fun and uh, getting kids to love and play basketball and this balance to, to also uh, be competitive and to maybe become a professional athlete. You know, um, I think this is a, a really interesting uh, topic for every coach. Not to lose any children, but not to, not to overburden them too early so they quit maybe in U14. What's often the case, you know, with uh, competitive sports. Yeah, and I have some interesting numbers as well uh, for the reformation that was um, um, highly due in Germany in basketball, as you can see. Uh, these are the numbers from 2018. We have a population of 82 million and just 26,000 um, U12 and younger kids are playing basketball in a, in a club, you know. And you see the other countries, France, Italy, Spain, uh, less population and way more many passes in the active uh, playing competition. Um, I don't know the Czech numbers. Uh, do you? You have 10 million ten inhabitants? We have about 10 million. Yeah, and... No idea. Okay, no. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't find it uh, on the internet, so... Would have been interesting. Yeah. Maybe but as you can see, the tradition is... Way, way, uh, way higher in France, Italy, and Spain, and they did a lot of things uh, right over the past decades, uh, which we didn't. Um, also, another interesting number um, in Germany: um, soccer. Here, uh, this is the the ranking of the the top um, the top sports in Germany that are played with active members. As you can see, uh, soccer seven over seven million. Yeah, almost the population of Czech <laughs> plays soccer in, in Germany. Yeah, it's crazy. And uh, then there's gymnastics and tennis and <laughs> shooting and uh, hiking. <laughs> it's all in a million. <laughs> but we have to compare ourselves maybe with, uh, with handball. Yeah, they have 750,000. And basketball just uh, overlapped dancing last year with 212,000 uh, active members. So it's really down, you know. We are not, we are a uh, niche, a niche sport in, in Germany. We have to be uh, correct about that. So a lot of work to be done and to, to get kids to play basketball, to love basketball. Um, yeah, I already told, uh, told you about this. Uh, the reform, the goal of the MTO uh, to in fact, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a bad uh, phrasing uh, in times of Corona, but uh, you get the idea. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, these are the, some some basic uh, some main topics of the MTO as well. Um, in Germany, in the 80s, uh, some brilliant guys had the idea that to to train kids properly in basketball, you have to do it like the adults, so you have to uh, have uh, 10 feet baskets, you know, you have to size 7 balls and the normal rule set. <coughs> and despite winning the European Championship in 1993, despite Dirk Nowitzki, uh, we didn't get a lot of members because uh, in, the, in the mini um, area because of those stupid, uh, in my opinion, those stupid uh, rules. And uh, luckily, uh, seven years ago, uh, they tried to reform it. So appropriate for all size for the kids, less rules, four and four, fun and engagement before championship. You can read that uh, for yourself. And this, I think, is, uh, is a really uh, these images a really great way to um, you know to emphasize the point. Um, if you let a nine-year-old, an average-sized nine-year-old, play on a normal hoop with ten feet, uh, it's like uh, a fifteen or eighteen-feet hoop, uh, so four meters and fifty centimeters for for an adult. And you can try to play on this kind of hoop, and it's not much fun, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have internet here, so I won't show you the, the video. But um, this is a famous uh, former coach, uh, pro coach, uh, who. Um, leads the, this iCoach Kids uh, program that I can totally recommend. It's in English, uh, but it's free of charge. You can find it on the internet, iCoachKids.com. And he's talking about the role of a coach in mini basketball, that it's not about the coach, and that it's derived from the word 
coach, you know, horses and a coach, to get one person to a destination, to a desired destination, from point A to point B, and the other, uh, the coaches are the vehicle for for this to to happen. You know, so it's not about you as a coach; it's about uh, the kids and their motivation and uh, trying um, to give them the tools to to succeed there, as I've written down here and to empower their natural curiosity. I think this is a really important point. <coughs> uh, uh, another great saying, um, I think this is really true, well, and it's a great motivation for myself. And, yeah. Now, to the topic at hand, uh, the power of Foligno, I, I, I call it adapted. Um, yeah, as we've spoken about uh, outside, I think it's, um, a great way to, to let them learn from their own mistakes and to get a, a tactical understanding of the game. You know, um, it's also great for, for U14, U16, I think. I mean, you see a lot of mistakes that uh, mini -ball basketball happen. Uh, basketball at UYC you also see in a U16, you know. Cannot make a simple read. And sometimes this mental overload with uh, Foninho uh, can help, I, I think, in my opinion. Yeah, um, to the history. Um, this is the famous book, I think most uh, many coaches uh, have, have read, Spielintelligenz, uh, so um, IQ um, in, in football, not, not the normal IQ, but the, <laughs> the football <laughs> IQ, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, he was a national player in hockey and the national coach, and then in the 90s he turned to, to soccer and he went to, to Spain, to Barcelona, and he greatly influenced the, the youth programs there with his um, approach to, uh, to coaching kids and um, with this uh, Foninho thing. Um, yeah, and the basic idea is set more goals, you know, like more targets to, to hit it as I've shown you outside. And uh, <coughs> in soccer, for example, not seven on seven, and, and, but three on three with more touches and no goalkeepers. And I think you can apply uh, these things to basketball as well. You have, always have some children who are uh, lethargic or apathetic and uh, don't get involved into the game, you know. And, and soccer, they call it uh, the, the flower picking kids who are sitting on the lawn and picking flowers, and, you know. And last year in Germany, um, they, they reformed it as well, I think, in, in 12 federal states. Uh, they have Foninho now in the U8 and U10 um, age groups. So they play Foninho there now. Yeah. Inter I think a really interesting point because uh, in, in football and soccer, uh, Germany is, is a leading nation and if they apply it to their coaching principles, I think you shouldn't overlook that. So that Foninho became like a structured and framed rules or is it so yeah, they, in, in the, so they don't play regular football. No, in, in like U6, U8, U10, uh, they they now play Foninho in 12 of 16 federal states. Yeah. So it's got its own rules and yeah, they just panels. yeah, they're, they're playing on four yeah. goals. Yeah, and there's a lot of uh, of course a lot of um, um, backlash and you know discussion that uh, they are destroying football, you know, and we're gonna suck <laughs> in a couple of years because of this. So, we'll see. yeah, we'll see. I think Barcelona didn't, uh, didn't suck, you know, in the last 20 years, but... <laughs> and Spain, you know, as a, as a football nation as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, we already talked about these points, court vision, uh, deep running, deep passing, using space, numbers advantages. Uh, it's a great way, you know, to emphasize this. Um, and the trailblazer for, for this Foninho thing to, to go to basketball in Germany it was uh, Marius Huf uh, from ABBA Berlin, the, the leading basketball program in, in Germany right now. And he's also the U15 national coach and uh, also a, a mentor and teacher at the MTO. So, yeah, and he, he used, uh, or uses Foninho a lot uh, um, in the U14, U12, even with players like Moritz and Franz Wagner. Uh, um, I talked uh, about this with him and uh, once a week he had a gym, an old gym, GDR gym, you know, a uh, bad gym, but four baskets, you know, almost like outside this, this structure. Two baskets there on the side and then the, the main court and he just played for Nino for, for one full season in this, in this um, on, on uh, Tuesday in this gym, you know, with, uh, I think with Mo Wagner was. And, 
Yeah. He saw he saw uh, some sort of development and was pretty successful uh, for the players and a lot of fun. Um, yeah, here this would have been a video of Marius in the coaches clinic where he's showing some um, Fonino stuff um, with uh, more kids than we've seen today. You know, um, yeah, but you can find it on YouTube as well. Um, if, you, if you want to, I can send you the link or the presentation after after today, and you can have a look for yourself. Okay, yeah, we already talked about these points, uh, advantageous if you want to get your kids involved for the economy in your practice, you know, to, to move more kids, not to have uh, kids standing around. This is always, uh, I think, a, a really important point uh, to, to question yourself as a coach, to, to, to move as many kids as possible most of the time. Uh, there are interesting numbers in school sports, like from 45 minutes, they the kids move nine minutes, real movement time, you know. And this is always a goal of myself to, to move men, uh, quality movement uh, as much as possible during practice. Um, yeah, progression. Uh, I already talked to, to Habo, he had a great point uh, today. Uh, to introduce uh, Fonino, I always did it just like with a game with the frisbee and already the four goals, and I tried to, to get them to, to come to the solution. But uh, you could break it down. I think it's really clever. Uh, for example, one on one, and you give them two goals. You know, so in a one on one environment, they maybe gonna make the fake, go to the other basket, and then they can replicate it in the in the four on four environment. So we can discuss discuss this later uh, as well. But yeah, this is the important uh, point: the mental overload thing. Uh, I've already shown you with Steph Curry's ball handling, and I think you can directly apply it to this uh, basketball IQ. Um, a thing as well, you know, to, to overload them. It's your job as a coach to the, uh, to find the right amount of overload. You know, if they stick the tongue out and it's too much, you know, and then you have to dial back. But um, when you play normal basketball after that, uh, it's really advantageous. Some examples of the progression. This is exactly what I've told you, um, uh, what I've shown you outside. Also, if you don't have baskets, you know, you can, you can play uh, Turmball, uh, it's called in German Tower Ball, you know, on boxes. You can play uh, Party Ball, um, <laughs> not, not from party, no, from uh, the political party, you know. Okay. So you have a number of passes, yeah. Okay. Is, this, is this possible with two baskets as, as well? You have like 10 baskets and then you can score. And then they can score on either basket. So you have two baskets, but still they can score on two targets, you know. This is possible in every gym. It's also a form of, of a new. Um, yes. Yeah, I think all of you as coaches know this. Uh, the changes of the parameters, uh, the endless possibilities to fit in your needs. Um, we talked about this as well. Yeah, okay. So I'm through and now we can go to the interesting uh, part. Maybe the, the feedback. What you think of this as a thought experiment? Maybe I can ask you right now. Uh, after today, would you try it in your own practice, or do you do you say it's uh, stupid, it's totally pointless? I don't. Um, and you can. I think we tried for the last couple of years, yeah. or two or three years, with our under ten and younger kids to play with more balls, use more baskets, you know, simplify the rules. So it's kind of something that you have uh, <coughs> performed right now so it's just to find your way you know and I said well I saw you uh, playing basketball on four four baskets and yeah. I said we, we, we also have mobile baskets yeah so we can use it play f on four baskets we didn't do it last year so I was like yeah that's, that's a good idea why not to use it so you're about absolutely about to use it next time during the practice but I was I have a question about you spoke about the numbers what it might be a question for all of us yeah like, what might be the reason for having still so low numbers in, in basketball what do you think guys yes person number 17 you saw like well like soccer you know right now we go in different schools a lot of schools play basketball with the kids over there now we see okay some kids are coming more kids but uh, in a lot of schools like First class, 
there were soccer cap shirts, there were volleyball shirts, the, the grown girls, uh, you know, the big girls, and normally we should start earlier in the kindergarten. But it's not like soccer, go to the kindergarten and do something with, with that. And now if for all the NBA players we get we have, you know, and okay they see yeah, basketball is a cool sport, but it takes time, you know, and and the rules are too difficult. Yeah. To like. And the city is important. Like Berlin is tradition. So many kids in Berlin playing basketball. In Dresden, no tradition. Like soccer, volleyball, handball, swimming, um, cultural things. So that's the problem if you like sports number 10. You mentioned culture things. It seems to me like uh, there are so many things that the kids can do today. Yeah, you know, that's the problem. A couple yeah. ages before, years ago, yeah. they, there was basketball, football, hockey. So three sports and play guitar, yeah. yeah, something like that. That's right the, now, they've got so many opportunities to do various sports, various activities. Right. So it seems to me like yes. another reason for the kids for not to go for playing basketball. But you have to train for the kids. So that's the reason why we go each week, Conrad, uh, go each week to one uh, school and play basketball. Then, like little kids, class one to four. four. Yeah, one to four. Yeah, the and do some basketball, and we start like. Five years ago, now we see in, in all clubs and trades more and more kids are coming. Mm -hmm. You know, but it takes time. Yeah. So it's you yeah. have to work with them. You have to yeah. ask, yeah. To talk to parents, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Show them that basketball is the right, right decision. Yeah, mm -hmm. but here you can ask him. He played handball, yeah, and then we came to school. We did some basketball. He was a little bit talented. <laughs> no, yeah, but, for but me then, the program worked out perfectly. Yeah. But then he had more fun with basketball and he started playing basketball and was successful. That's important too. Like his rules made them successful, you know, like lower baskets and everything like this. So they need to be successful. You know, that's the reason why we played before this uh, tower ball. You know, with the kids, can it's easier for them to make a basket. And how long have you been practicing this concept of fun, you know, into under yeah. six, under eight? Yeah, I mean, um, when I started uh, coaching the U10, um, Rico Gottwald, our manager now, um, he was at the clinic of Marius Hood uh, and Horst Wein before he died. Uh, so the, one of the last clinics Horst Wein gave uh, introduced Fininho to the basketball community in, in okay. Germany. And Rico was there and when we had some camp, and Rico did it. And I didn't understand the word. He mm -hmm. told it in uh, Saxon <laughs> language. You know? But uh, I really liked the, I really liked the, the concept, and then I picked it up and read about it. Uh, so yeah. you were kind of still for two years now, waiting for the progress, for seeing whether it it worked. I can tell that it works good. So we will see if it works yeah. to in Dresden or in other cities. So, but uh, another question, like. As we started the project like 2011, I came here with a lot of U12, U14 teams, and the Czech teams whooped our asses for real. You know, not by technique. I think our kids had better techniques, but your kids uh, like they can play the ball, just push, 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 and aggressive, and aggressive, and then and then two years or three years later, um, we close the games. You know, we played better and. We played a lot of against Czech teams, and so my kids learned to play hard, you know, but, but the techniques were then a little bit better from our kids, because we started in Germany, like U12, with techniques and everything. So how you, you guys practice in U8, U10, that they can play the ball like this, it's the same here. Like, Fernino is part to learn the ability to play. So what you guys did the last years with them in this age, your kids are really so they can play ball, you know? Yeah. Okay, the, that's what we're doing. Shooting like right. this, but yeah. yeah. That's what we're trying to do as well, like not to focus on technique too soon, just to give them fun during playing some kind of basketball. It's not strict basketball, but start with the basketball a bit later on. Under eleven I think it's it's fine. Under ten, it's absolutely difficult rules. They can dribble both hands, we don't care, they can uh, do the travel violation, but under 11, when it, it's, that's actually the age when all competition starts in the Czech Republic, under 11. Under 11, okay. Up to then, we have only, you know, just tournaments that we 
that we organize, but it's not like competition. So under 11, that's when we start playing like regular basketball with lower baskets, for sure. But I think great idea is to play four on four, still under 11. Because I, I saw you played in under 10, four on four, right, in Dresden. But this is the reason you, you, you said 2011, right? Because it was before the reform, you know, yeah. and they uh, in Czech Republic they had it for for yeah. decades the lower baskets, right, and the smaller baskets mm -hmm. in U10 basketball and just the tournament thing. So there you can see the yeah. advantage of getting baskets down, of getting uh, child appropriate uh, ball size, yeah. and so on and so forth. At the four four it was a good thing I think in the U12 U10 because more ball touches, you know, more space to create something. Mm -hmm. Five on five, you start like in U12 or U10 with automatical spacing, but it's hard for the kids, so. Yeah. I like the form for uh, uh, more, but then a smart coach said, okay, in U8 or U6, we play three on three full court. That's no kid can run five <laughs> minutes, yeah, three exactly. on three in the U8, that. you know, that is super bad form four, I think it's, yeah. it's good. So when do you start playing five on five? Under eleven? Uh, no. U forty. U forty right now. Under forty. Yeah. yeah. So this is a so major point of, of discussion. Thirteen and twelve play four on four. But it depends in the region. Okay. So in some regions in Germany we play five on five already in the under twelve, uh -huh. and in some we play four on four. Yeah. But the official I basketball rules, in the league basketball rules, is four on four. four, four right. Yeah. The official right now. Okay. okay. Yeah. But the problem right now is. If they came from the U12 to the U14, we discussed, mm -hmm. it's so hard. Higher baskets, all uh, time violations, uh, three seconds and eight seconds, and bigger ball, higher basket, five and five. Time so that's, that's hard to win from <laughs> U12 to U14. Mm -hmm. That's right now a little bit the problem for us. So, so we you start under, like bring. You don't have under 13 now? No, not yet. Maybe, maybe think about making. Competition for under 13, right? Because right. we have under 11, 12, 13, yeah. 14. So in, in, our, in, six, in our state, we have like something like this, and we do it like um, I bring the better kids from the U12 one time a week to my practice U14, that they learn all the things a little bit earlier, you know. But it's hard in this situation, though. And you guys got U13 in the past, you got U13, U15, now you switch to U14 and U12 in Czech Republic, right? And, and under 13. You have all? Yeah, you yeah. have all. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. That could be I think it's better. You know, yeah. because they play all. Because the difference between under 12 and under 13 is still quite big. So, big. so once you jump from under 12 to under 14, it's and like huge difference but and also the rules and everything changes so we go gradually year by year up up to under 15 and from under 15 we have 17 and 19 okay. which is but what is your difference between under 12 and under 13 what do you mean the rules yeah the rules the rules yeah. uh, under 12 play lower baskets and size 5 okay. and under 13 they play higher baskets but still uh, small balls like oh, size 5 okay, that's under 14, they play high baskets and, and under 7. Uh, I mean, size 7. Oh, yeah. size, 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 yeah, size 7. Size 7? Yeah. Okay. okay. The boys, boys, boys don't play uh, size okay. 6. Okay. In Germany, it's like U12, ball uh, 5, U14, ball 6, and then U16, seven. ball 7. Uh -huh. And it's good for, for the shooting thing, you know, but. It's just for one year, so it's changed yeah. every, every year, for the two years, it changed something. Mm. And one major difference we can talk about is uh, you allow zone defense in no. No, no, U11, no? no. Under, no. under, up to under 13, it's not allowed. Um, no, under 14. 14, yeah. even okay. under And the even 14 one quarter, quarter, right? Allowed. Even one quarter under 14, or something like that. One quarter. You can play zone defense in the 14, just one quarter. No, and not you can't play zone defense at all on the 14. Okay. <laughs> just man to man defense. And the passerella. But you can double team, right? And, yeah. and you, yeah. This is the difference in, in Germany. This is, I don't like in Germany. They, they totally. So, uh, and what do you think? 
you think that it's bad for kids to double team or Yeah, not? You, I think you you take away some some engagement defensively, you know, to be smart and uh, to hit the open man, you know. Yeah. I mean, you can if if the level is too low, you can you can uh, make some adjustments. Exactly, but that's on uh, the coaches, right? Yeah, it's just not to be stupid. If you see that your opponent is not able, you are beating them like yeah. 50, and they are not able to get over the half. Yeah. I won't double team. I will tell them, guys, yeah, stick with your man. And some coaches, that's the reason why they make this. Some coaches, I want to win by 100, or I want to win by 120. <laughs> yeah, but that's the reason why uh, why they made this this rules. A lot of coaches said no, I don't know, or, or, you know, but or if the coaches talked before, like okay, we both teams can do like this and this, mm -hmm. I think it should be more up to the coaches, yeah. so to the, to bring the kids like to a better level. Yeah. So how do you play in the under twelve? So you have four quarters. Four quarters. Each yeah. ten minutes. Eight, eight minutes. Eight minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because we have eight quarters or five eight. minutes. Yeah, we, we eight, play eight. five minutes and each player has to play two uh -huh. and need to pause two. Yeah. So they can play at least six times. That's what some of regions in the Czech Republic have tried past last year. Okay. But it, I heard that it didn't, it didn't work very well. Okay. It was it prolonged the time of the, the game and the kids got confused like when to play they, they kept asking the coaches like do I play now and do I stop, you know? So I think we will get back to playing quarters at under. I think the Pasarela is one quarter is... Pardon? One, yeah, one quarter, you can yeah. play one quarter and then... Uh, one, yeah. Then you, then you I had a problem with the Klatovi. Really? I just had my kids over there, uh -huh. kids were injured. And then one guy from, uh, from Czech Republic was a little bit pissed because I can change, you know? Yeah. My kids play all the same time, you know, and and then he said, "Okay, we have to play again." <laughs> Wait, uh, like Oli, how long is it? Fifteen years was in Deutschland Cup. These rules, twenty years. We had the same rules like twenty years ago. Germany, but then they stopped us. It's the reason why your your youth teams came with fifteen kids, and our youth teams, okay. Normally with, by 12, two kids are, are shy, they don't want to come to the tournament, so you get just that. Or inches, you know? Yeah. So, so. I, I have one question about the Falenia thing. Um, I, I tried it sometimes in, in my uh, practice, and um, sometimes it's difficult if you have a very heterogeneous group. So some, some, some mm -hmm. kids get it very early, and they they use the opportunities they have, and other kids they don't, and they um, pick flowers. Basically. Yeah, how do you do that? Yeah, um, what you could do is um, to, of course, to, to do um, teams that, that separate the, the, the best players from each other, and then maybe um, you have to challenge the kids individually. I think uh, it's an, an important point. For example, you can have any kid dribble as many times as they want, but the better kids just one time, or they just allowed to pass, or they are just allowed to score with the left hand, or they have to play four passes before they can score. You know, for, for example, this would come to my mind directly to just challenge them and to, to level the, the, the playing field. Uh, and then, if, if it's still not going to work, maybe yeah, you have. To let them train with the with the higher age group, you know, if they are too too good already, you know, to challenge them in the, in the different group. One question we discuss about this: um, What's like Fonini wants that kids have fun, you know? And the thing is, like in Germany, you have like kids, it should, just the parents bring it to the to the practice, you know. And we talked about. We should normally be a little bit harder to the kids. Sometimes they lost one on one kid, uh, but it's fine because the group, you know, if later on, like in it's like U16 teams, if they just come, you know, don't want to play really, that sucks. And I, I never saw a team in Czech Republic though, like uh, they come to gym, oh, I don't want to play, and you know. I think so. That's like, <laughs> okay, we are just in Klettony and against Usti, and uh -huh. okay, I don't know the other teams. But that's what I saw in the tournaments, you know, like 
better tournaments. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what we talked about. It's better to sometimes to lose a kid, and uh, the other kids, you know, build a group and play hard or practice hard. Or it's better every kid should play. What's your opinion? I, I agree. I don't think it's it's different in the Czech Republic. We still have teams and kids that are not happy for being there. They are coming just because because of their parents, you know. So I think it's it's uh, everywhere the same. And what you're doing with the kids? Uh, well, play ping pong. <laughs> no, no. Well, I I tell them <coughs> like. Uh, <coughs> Individually, if you don't want to be here, well, talk, t say it to your, tell your parents or let them know that I, that I want to talk to them. So if it would be uh, repeating continuously, I would talk to parents, absolutely. Like, is this what you, what you want to do? Is, is this what your kid wants to do? But if you do it, start earlier, like you 8, you 10? Well, we, 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 we actually have some, some problem with one, one kid. So I, stripped, I immediately called her par his parents. And I, I said, you know, every practice, because we pumped <coughs> in the middle of the practice when some of the kids went for the toilet, they said, hey, Martin is standing in the corridor. I was like, I didn't know Martin is at the practice. So I went there and he was just sitting on, on the bench in the corridor. I was like, we have a practice for about a half hour. Didn't you hear the ball dribbling? I was like, oh, sorry, coach, I forgot. And it went on like three or four times in a row. And then we found out he's trying to avoid the practice. Right? So we, we try to uh, call her par his parents and text them, actually no reply, so we don't know whether we'll see him again at, at the practices. But it's easier to bring in the intensity in the U8 or U10 uh, age than later, you know, that's what, what we say. But for Nino is everybody should play, that's a little bit what I'm thinking about, is it's good or not, you know, it's, but it's, it depends on the coach to, you know, and to light him up. Yeah. So, like in our older teams, like you 14, we have four teams, and if somebody is the one, there's number, team number four, that's fine. That's how we handle this, but not every club can, can do this like that, you know? Like it's because all the clubs, they are happy the to have the kids, and but you have to start earlier, some rules, some intensity, mm -hmm. and then it's easier in the upper ages, I think. So. By the way, uh, for, for Georg, um, the word uh, Funinho is a <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a partmanteau, so like like uh, brunch, breakfast and lunch, and it's uh, fun and ni niño for Spanish child. <laughs> <laughs> so the part also of which I wanted to share with you. <laughs> Changed a little bit too. Like in the past, I saw the youth coaches with a lot of power techniques. Mm -hmm. And then in Dresden, like last year or two years ago, we had this woman coach. Melana Molisova. Yeah, yeah, the legend. Yeah. She did something she with. Like the the goddess of, 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 of practicing kids. Yeah, like with uh, <laughs> some crazy things, you know, with kids and um, something like that too. So it's changed. Uh, yeah, she's, she's entirely jammed in. Uh, the Italian approach called uh, Easy Basket. Right. Okay. They have some clinics in the Czech Republic. <coughs> and she absolutely loves it. Yeah. So it's so it's something like this too. Quite similar. Yeah. Quite similar. And you'll see um, some of you will see some of the examples of exercises and activities during my performance. I have some some activities and games in there involved. Yeah. So. So something changes here too, like. Yeah, to keep them they opportunity, to Spain you know, and see something. get involved, all the players keep, yeah. you know, not to sit, sit as, as you said, the flower kid, the kid collecting the flowers. Okay. Anything else? Otherwise, I would wrap it up and we could go to the Italian restaurant and have lunch. Okay, then. We can give them Essen nochmal a bit so the meal. So the coaches are dressed in Czech and German things, so they sit together and talk about the ages what they are doing.
I think it's it's good and not of just this group and this group. Just ask, okay, what are you doing in practice? What are you doing in practice? It would be, it would be nice. That's what it's going to be. Like, in yeah, the future. Like, that's the reason. Years, if you're and just pick your partner right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For the rest of the season. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Stefan, jetzt fick.